was a poor country and you would be better off manufacturing in Madagascar. I, I want to ask you, ma'am, uh, you started the Songwriters Caucus yes. here on Capitol Hill, and uh, the idea was to create, you know, a voice for creative people, intellectual creative property. Uh, are you starting to feel that this is, uh, you know, politics mixing into music in a way that probably is unfortunate? Well, I, I think that, you know, looking at it even more on a global issue, it is, um, the federal government seeming to pick winners and losers. Okay. And that is something that concerns us. In the manufacturing sector of this country, whether it is Gibson guitars, whether it is some of our furniture manufacturers in North Carolina, uh, whether it is individuals that are producing plastics and component parts in other regions of the country for U.S. automobiles, my goodness, one of the things that we want to do is keep American jobs firmly planted on American soil. And if you're going to have the administration and the federal agencies continuing to dole out rules and regulations, then it's going to make that impossible. So from a larger issue, it is just the interference of really bad policies into the manufacturing sector of the country. Now, Henry, I know you've probably told this story over and over again, but uh, you know, just to, to quick recap, the, the raid was on October 24th when two dozen armed agents from uh, Department of Justice came to your two plants. Well, it actually came to uh, three plants. Okay. And uh, our corporate headquarters. So there's four locations. Yes. And uh, usually, usually something that, that's involving federal law, there's sort of a phone call, somebody calls somebody, and, and you know, at this sort of level, it, you had no inkling whatsoever that you were... No, I, mean, I was sitting at home and going, coming into work when I got a sudden call that there were five armed agents in my office and they had uh, closed my door and wouldn't let anybody in, and uh, they were going into our IT department, they were, uh, had closed down our factories and were going through and confiscating uh, parts, basically. Would well, they have also been taking like proprietary designs or, or things that uh, were unrelated to the, to the wood that I guess is at issue? Well, you know, we don't know what they took, actually. Uh, we, can, we know what wood they took. We've done an inventory at this point, but they actually turned off our security cameras when they started going through the plant. Wow, um, and have, have, I, have charges been filed? There have been no charges filed. Not for, because I know there was a previous case in 2009, no charges for that case. There are still no charges on that case either. Uh, there are no, no charges filed and they grab a tremendous amount of, of uh, inventory. So every guitar has a fingerboard and they took almost all of our fingerboards. Without fingerboards, we can't build sure. guitars. So it goes beyond the loss of just uh, the wood, which was uh, about half a million dollars in this particular uh, seizure. But you know, the impact on production and our ability to produce product was quite severe. And, and I know you're here to uh, to watch the uh, president's speech as a guest of the congresswoman. But before we talk about that. Could you maybe talk about, not so much the economic or the political, but wh what was the emotional damage done to your craftsmen and the workers who you know, spent years making these incredible products and the idea that somebody could come into their sanctuary? Uh, how has that affected your craftsmen? Well, it's, it's like coming into someone's home. I mean, this is where uh, we all spend a tremendous amount of time. Um, they're dazed and confused, you know. The first thing that probably went through their minds is, are they going to have a job yeah. at the end of the day? Because they were sent home. And, uh, you know, the federal government coming in, you know, who knows what's going to happen, so. Yeah, let me add something okay. here. When you're on the floor at the Gibson factory, which I've had the opportunity to do in times past, one of the things that you realize is, 
the individuals that are crafting these guitars are skilled. They are skilled artisans, skilled craftsmen, skilled engineers. And as they are working the fretboard and working out the body of this guitar, you will many times see them pick that instrument up like they're going to hold it. I, yeah. and it's, a, it's a great thing to watch them do to craft this. And so these are, many of them are musicians that also are skilled and trained to create this instrument. They understand it. So this is not something, you can't just go make these things offshore and get the same kind of product. People want a, a Gibson guitar or a Les Paul for a specific reason, you know, and it's well, the sure it's that, that, it's, it's that search for tone. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. You know, it's always yeah. that search for tone. People come to work for us because they really are, are passionate about guitars, a lot of them. Sure. I mean, I can tell you some really individual stories that are uh, pretty compelling. Yeah, but, uh, man, the idea to invite Henry to tonight's job speech with President Obama tonight, how, how did that come about and what what was the TikTok? It, you know, well, we, uh, Henry and I had talked uh, right after the raid took place and then a couple of days later, I guess it was, we find out that Oh, the president is going to do this jobs speech tonight. And I thought, you know what? We all know the best economic stimulus is a job. Sure. And here they're wanting to go pass another bill, which isn't going to fix the issue. And you have people like Henry Jeskowitz who are doing the right thing, creating jobs and employing people and training people. And they're making it more difficult for them. And so <coughs> I just called him and said, Henry, Come on, be my guest. I said, we don't have all the details yet, but those will come. Let's get it on your calendar. And you'll be in the speaker's box? Yes. Yeah, and, I'm um, pretty excited about that. So you'll have the opportunity to meet with other business leaders, job right. creators. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to speak with the speaker, Speaker Boehner himself, yes. I imagine. Uh, what is your message to the speaker, and what would be the message to the president if you uh, run into him in the hallway? Well, the first message is that, you know, I think that we need to be sane about this particular issue and, and, and get it resolved. Uh, it's injuring our business. There's no, there's no purpose to it. it. It really needs to be resolved. People need to start talking to us if there's a problem. And if there's a problem, we'll be happy to fix it. We sure. are not aware of one. Uh, but. Uh, let's get it past us so we can go back to work and, and, and do what we like to do, which is manufacture guitars and compete. Uh, we have a lot of powerful competitors from overseas that are much bigger than we are, uh, with a bigger bankroll, and this is really injuring us. Uh, How much longer um, can your company survive without its inventory and the status it's at right now? Well, we're, we're trying to replace the, the goods that were seized. Uh, but as, as of three days ago when I left, we were going to run out of uh, fingerboards in about a week. So next week sometime, unless we're able to get something happening, uh, we will have to shut down plants. And will, will that affect, like, you know, you have even new guitars coming out. You have the X yeah. guitar coming out. You have the Joan Jet guitar. It will, it will shut down the plant. I mean, yeah. uh, now we're hoping not to do that, but that is a, you know, at least a 50% possibility at this point. Have you, have you had any discussions with any of the artists or musicians? People? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're getting, uh, you know, if you uh, check out our website, we have videos. Oh, really? Lots of uh, musicians and how they feel on the subject. So. Yeah, it's just so strange. It's, it's almost an attack on art. You know, I think it's almost a, when they say a factory, it's not like a, it's not like an assembly plant. It's all, yeah. I think of it, I was telling uh, somebody earlier that's, you know, I try to imagine, you know, the Disney animators, you know, with, like that wasn't a factory either. You know, but I, I imagine it's almost that same kind of love between, you know, with pen and paper, the way your craftsmen feel about the wood. Well, musicians are, you know, feeling attacked as well because this law actually reaches out beyond our factory to the retail store and to individual 
um, musicians, and they are they're unable to now take their guitar uh, across any kind of border because of the requirement to have information that typically you would never have if you bought an older guitar. Yeah. And uh, so they feel like they're attacked, and the law is pretty mean sounding where they could be, you know, they have criminal liability sure. for something like a guitar, which is... Yeah, and then, you know, these, you know, in a guitar shop, you, you, it's not like you can afford lawyers either, like I'm sure it's no. costing you a fortune. You know, so every single small shop, you know, every person that plays guitar uh, is, is impacted, and that's a lot of people, and they're pretty upset about it. Yeah. The people who suggested to you that it would be better for you to move your operation from the United States to India was that a, was that whispered to you, or was that any kind of a, was that an official person who told you that? That was, there was actually a filing uh, that in one of our lawsuits. So we have it in writing that they said you know uh, specific to Madagascar. You know, it's a poor country, and you would be better off manufacturing in Madagascar. Uh, wow. Something to that effect. Mm -hmm. 